Hello, I'm Dev, and this is a short overview on how to use the Pattern Packer node. The node is a custom utility I've made to generate a random pattern of shapes without them overlapping. You'll find more information on how to download this in the video description. You can use this node in the Substance Designer, Painter, Player, or any of the supported software integrations, depending on what kind of project you want to use it for. I'm going to show you how this is used as a designer, but all the parameters are the same regardless of what software you're using this with. Ok, I've just got a new standard graph with a single diffuse output. So I'm going to drag the Pattern Packer 2 graph into this window. You can see that the node is by default generating a pattern of disk shapes. There are several different outputs which I'll talk about later, but for now I'm going to plug the Pattern plus Background output into the diffuse, so it's easier to see the results. If I go over to the Properties window, you'll see there's a bunch of information about the node. Keep going down and the first set of parameters are inputs we can enable. I'm going to skip over these for now and show them off in other videos. Ok, in the general group you have an amount which decreases and increases the number of shapes generated. You'll notice as I increase this value it will reach a point where it will stop increasing the pattern density and only shuffle the existing shapes. It's up to you to find a balance of what looks good and does it impact performance. The amount it can pack is dependent on the size of the shape, but there are ways around this by playing with the size options or chaining the effect with another. The position bias sliders allow you to change the position of the generated shapes to favour towards a certain area. So for example, if you want the shape to be generated more towards the right, then slide the left value towards the right. If you want them more towards the left, then use the right slider. You can use a combination of the sliders to really specify an area for the pattern to generate or to avoid shapes on the edges for tiling. For instance, if you are creating a road texture and wanted some leaves or stones running along the curb, you could get that effect quite easily. In the next group, you can change the shape to a variety of different ones, including custom ones. Some of the inbuilt shapes will enable a slider to alter the variation of that shape, as you would get with the shape node. I'm going to just go back to this shape to show the next options better. You can alter the colour of the shape by changing the output colour. Above it is a button to assign random colours, so you'll see that this overrides the output colour and disables it. You can also change the background colour. The next group, you have separate X and Y sliders for the size of the shape to change the proportions. You have a scale to uniformly alter the size of the shape. There's also a random size slider to give each shape a random scaling. You can rotate the shapes to all face the direction, and there's a slider to randomize the rotation of each shape. The gap size slider allows you to change the spacing between the shapes, so increasing this will create a sparsely populated pattern. You can also use this to fix any overlapping errors that may happen on rare occasions. So for example, if I increase the random size to around here, you'll see that I have two overlapping circles. I won't go into details on why this can happen, but to fix this, just increase the gap size slightly until it fixes itself. The last group are the advanced options. The most important one is the collision shape. The algorithm used by the pattern packer uses two different models to detect overlapping. By default it's set to circle, but if we change the main pattern shape to a square instead, then play with some of these settings, you'll see that I've got some overlapping shapes. If I change the collision shape to a square, you'll see that it has correctly detected the collisions. Generally you want to choose the collision shape which best represents your pattern shape. You might have noticed that other shapes disappeared when I made that change, even though they weren't overlapping. So it's best to try them both, and use whatever works best. The precision slider is a multiplier to increase the collision checks for each shape. Decreasing this will widen the room for errors, but will give you a performance increase. Sometimes you don't need it to be that precise, and it could potentially give you better results. The last two sliders are to tweak the pixel range of the collision checks for the two models. You can see as I change the slider, I get different results. All three of these sliders are basically for finer tweaking the results. 
The default values are the most optimum, but feel free to have a play and see the different results. Now that I've made a bunch of changes, I can show the different outputs more clearly. The pattern is just for the pattern without the background. Pattern plus background is for everything which we've been using so far. The pattern grayscale is a grayscale output of the pattern. Finally, mask is a black and white hard mask. In this section, I'll show how custom shapes can be used with the pattern packer node. So I've got a grayscale image here and I've got a pattern packer node with a bunch of different settings generating a unique pattern. I'll plug the grayscale image into the input shape. And then the pattern packer, I'll change the shape to use the input pattern. You can see that the pattern is updated and you can now make any adjustments shown previously and the pattern will update accordingly. So I can scroll down and add some random rotations in here, maybe some overall rotations. I can apply a color or a random color. It's up to you whatever effect you want to achieve. Okay, if I zoom into the shape here, you can see that the background is showing through the grayscale image. The luminosity value of the original image has been used as an alpha blend. To have better control over this, you can use the color mode options. Okay, I've just taken the grayscale image and fed it into a gradient map to give it a red color, and then used the disk shape to merge a new alpha with it. In the pattern packer node with the input image option selected, you'll see that I have a choice of input color modes. By default, it is grayscale. If I change it to color, you'll see that the color input shape connection has been enabled and the output color options are no longer available. I'll put this image into the input shape and you can see that the node updates and the original alpha and colors are preserved. In the next videos, I'll show how to use the other inputs and get a combination of all these effects.